notion of procreation, yes, this is an argument that's often deployed against um, same-sex uh, partnerships, etc. Yeah. I think we need to remember something I said earlier on, and that is that, first of all, homosexuality is very uncommon. We, I, there are some very, uh, let's say, um, some very a ambitious estimates that something like 5% of the population are either gay or lesbian. So this is a very small minority of people. It's also a very stable statistic. So we're not finding that more people are gay these days or lesbian these days. It's remained the same. So I don't think the argument that 5% of the world population will suddenly change the balance of the world <laughs> is quite absurd, actually. So no, I completely reject that. And there is a, a great deal of research by psychobiologists that clearly shows this trend. So no, I don't think that's a threat to procreation at all. Secondly, I think that homosexuality is biologically determined. I don't think it's something that you learn, despite mm -hmm the view in many the cultures, fears, yeah. the fears um, you know, that's expressed that you can encourage people to be homosexual, no, I don't think that you can. We need to differentiate between behavior and a sexual orientation. Yes, some, not, some heterosexual people may at times engage in homosexual behavior, this happens, but it doesn't mean that they're gay or a lesbian, it doesn't mean that they choose that particular path. Uh, so I don't think it's a threat at all because I think it's biologically determined and the number of people in the world that are gay and lesbian has remained largely the same. Right, well we are going to a very short break. See you on the other side. Are you a business who had an interest rate swap loan? Was your business missold interest rate swaps or other similar products? We can help you recover thousands of pounds. Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC and Royal Bank of Scotland systematically missold complicated interest hedging products to thousands of small business customers. The FSA concluded that swaps were missold and has ordered the banks to pay appropriate compensation. To find out more, call JIC Swap Claims now or go online at swapclaim.tv. Check it, your boy Zeus. Catch me performing live, doing my own set, and alongside Gippy Gerriwal for the first time in UK on the 12th of October at the National Indoor Arena for the Brit Asia TV Awards. It's going to be big. Make sure you're there. Peace. The Brit Asia Music Awards 2013. Tickets have been released. Get yours now to avoid disappointment. For further information, call 07977902053. Log on to theticketfactory.com or chillytickets.com. Asia TV brings you a new era of affordable and impactful TV commercials. Advertising with us helps businesses drive sales and increase brand awareness. Since we started with Brit Asia, we've had a very encouraging response in the first month. Over 880 customers contacted us via our website. If you would like to take your brand further by advertising on Brit Asia TV, get in touch now on 0870 818 0000 or 07977 902059. No, I don't. I just think it's normal. It's nothing, I don't think it's, it's normal. I think it's, everyone has their own personality and things like that. I don't think they should be discriminated because of the way they are. So I, I think everyone should get treated equally. Not at all. I treat them like everybody. Uh, I like I treat everybody else. They are as humans as everybody else is. And as I said, I don't think it's a big issue. Um, and in today, especially in today's society, um, and it's whatever people uh, live, uh, they should be allowed to live however they want to live. I don't know. I think it's. I don't know. Maybe it's alright for some people. You know? 
boy, the boy, girl, the girl. Maybe it's alright. The way I see it is like I don't base my friends on you know sexuality, race, religion, anything like that. So if someone was gay, it wouldn't make a difference as long as they're nice. Are they cool? Not at all in terms of discrimination. We don't discriminate against them whatsoever. But there is discrimination within the Asian community in terms of people who are homosexuals. It's very hidden within the communities. And a lot of people feel scared, you know, to come out. Welcome back after the break. My name is Jyoti Sindhan and today we are discussing homosexuality within Asian society. I'm joined in the studio today by Dr. Lucy Jaspal, who focuses on social psychological concerns and developing possible interventions for their resolution. Now, even Pope Francis shook the Catholic world, stating in stark terms that the church has erred by focusing so heavily on ab abortion, homosexuality and contraception to the detriment of traditional Christian values like helping the poor. He also said of gay priests, who am I to judge? And said, tell me, when God looks at a gay person, does he endorse the existence of this person with love or reject and condemn that person? We must always consider the individual, the person. Now, it seems views are changing, possibly softening towards homosexuality. We even have laws allowing same-sex marriages. Now, Dr. Desprat, do you feel that there is a growing confidence surrounding homosexuality? You know, are people accepting of it? And do you feel people are being far more tolerant towards this? Uh, yes, I do. I do think that there's growing acceptance of homosexuality, but I think it's... Um, there's always that risk of us being com complacent and thinking that there is unanimous acceptance of this and there simply isn't. Uh, one of my colleagues, um, I, I think I talked about this earlier on, uh, Professor Eric Anderson, who's based at the University of Winchester, has looked at attitudes um, towards homosexuality within a very specific setting. So he's mm -hmm. looked at attitudes within a middle class, uh, sixth form college um, in the south of England, which is attended uh, predominantly by um, white middle class uh, uh, young boys and girls. And he's found that attitudes towards homosexuality are improving in these contexts. That, um, that he, he describes, yes, he describes what uh, a softening of masculinity, this idea that boys um, are finding it increasingly acceptable to uh, show affection towards other boys, to maybe hug their fr male friends, and, and etc. And that this is no longer frowned upon in the same way that it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. So basically boys are not really afraid of being uh, called gay and that others wouldn't even suspect them of being gay because of this extra physical contact. This seems to suggest that there's growing acceptance that people are becoming more accepting. But as I said, uh, it is not the case everywhere. And I think gender has a really important role to play, particularly within South Asian society. There are very specific let's say, rules about, um, an, uh, about gender norms, about mm -hmm. what it means to be a man and what it means to be a woman and, and what a man can do and what a man should do and what he, he shouldn't do. And so there is a fear, I think, among um, yen, uh, many uh, young uh, South Asian individuals that they may be accused of being gay um, and that this can result in, in negative consequences socially, etc. So there is still a lot of work to be done yeah. among ethnic and religious minority groups, I think, in particular. It's not just in school, of course, it's also within um, the general population as well. There is homophobia within the general population. But I do think things are going in the right direction. I mean, speaking of homophobia, I mean, what do you think is the biggest concern about homosexuality? You know, why is this, the, you know, homophobia that still exists and how do we overcome those concerns and those fears? Mm. I think the biggest problem associated with um, homophobia, homosexuality, is hate crime. Uh, the reason for this is that often it, um, people are not aware that what they're actually doing is, in, is committing hate crime when they um, commit particular acts um, that they see as being legitimate. I give, I'll give you one example of uh, two men who were convicted of hate crime against uh, gay people in the city of Derby, uh, which is a city I know very well. Uh, they were found guilty of distributing anti-gay leaflets and uh, these leaflets called for the death penalty against gay people. And as you can imagine, this created a lot of fear within the gay community in the city of Derby. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And so, of course, we, we and some people may justify this on religious grounds, but we must remember that what's actually happening is we're creating a situation where fear and where um, uh, intense worry is becoming normalized. It's becoming um, the case for, for gay and lesbian people. And that's something that I think should stop. 
Um, and what sort of background did these individuals come from? These well, the two individuals were um, of, of Pakistani background, okay. and uh, they were uh, these were they described these as religious leaflets, and they were quoting uh, aspects of you know Islamic religious scripture when doing this. Uh, oh. Now, of course, their actions do not represent all Muslims at all, but um, they themselves were trying to represent Islam here, and they were. So we have Gay Pride in the UK and there are growing celebrations across the world including the second annual Gay Pride Parade in Uganda. I mean, what effect do you think these growing celebrations have on society as a whole and specifically on the Asian community? Well, I think we can look at this at various different levels. Um, the implications this has for individuals who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, well, I think the implications are very positive. We know from basic psychology that people look for a sense of belonging. They look for acceptance and inclusion in relevant groups. We all like to feel that we're accepted by others. And gay pride provides such a context for, for gay people who may have previously been marginalized. It provides them with a sense of being with, rel with others who are in yeah. a similar situation. So the implications are positive for them. For society, what it does is it also creates greater visibility for LGBT individuals, showing society that they actually exist. But I think that sometimes gay pride is interpreted by some people as being um, immoral, as encouraging homosexuality, and I don't think it does. I don't think it encourages it at all. I don't think it's even possible to encourage homosexuality. Uh, so I think this has raised questions about the position of gay and lesbian people within broader society. And it has actually created a situation of, um, let's say, conflict also between different groups within society where some groups are opposing this and they're actively trying to stop gay pride from taking place. And indeed, right. this was one of the reasons that these two individuals in the city of Derby distributed anti-gay leaflets calling for the death penalty for, hom for homosexuals. And for those of you who don't know, L LGBT is, correct me if I'm wrong, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. That's right, individuals. yes. I got it right. Right, we're going to a quick break. See you on the other side. Brit Asia TV proudly presents the biggest night in the British Asian music calendar. The Brit Asian Music Awards 2013 taking place on Saturday the 12th of October at the National Indoor Arena in Birmingham. Hosted by Corvinda Gear. Witness a night full of spectacular performances from the biggest names in Asian entertainment, including for the first time in the UK, an exclusive performance by Diljit Dessange. Also performing exclusively for the first time in the UK, Kipi Garawal, Laquinda Wadali, Jazz Dami, Rackstar and the Dream Warriors, Sarinda Shinda, Baljit Malwa, Roach Killer, Steel Bangles and Cash Tastic, plus many more. Tickets have been released. Get yours now to avoid disappointment. For further information, call 07977902059. Log on to theticketfactory.com or chillytickets.com. Are you a business who had an interest rate swap loan? Was your business missold interest rate swaps or other similar products? We can help you recover thousands of pounds. Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC and Royal Bank of Scotland systematically missold complicated interest hedging products to thousands of small business customers. The FSA concluded that swaps were missold and has ordered the banks to pay appropriate compensation. To find out more, call JIC Swap Claims now or go online at swapclaim.tv. Welcome back after the break. My name is Jyoti Sindar and you are watching Rendezvous, where today we are discussing homosexuality within the Asian society. I am joined in the studio today by Dr. Rusi Jaspar, and we are going over same-sex marriages. Now, same-sex marriage, also known as gay marriage, is marriage between two persons of the same biological sex. Now, as of August 2013, 15 countries allowed same-sex couples to marry. A law has also been passed in the UK, effective in England and Wales, which is expected to be fully enforced in 2014. Now, polls in various countries show there is a rising support for legally recognising same-sex marriage, whether it's across race, ethnicity, age, religion, 
or political affiliation and socio-economic status. Recently, the UK, which we did touch upon earlier, had its first Muslim-lesbian marriage in Manchester. Now, Dr. Lucy Jaspal, what is your personal opinion on same-sex marriages and do you feel countries need to be more accepting? Well, I think this is really a question for an ethicist or somebody who specializes in the morality of um, same-sex marriage, and that's not my area. I can only really talk about this from a psychological perspective and um, provide some insight into what uh, gay and lesbian people may themselves be thinking about this and why uh, they have been fighting for this and what, why this means so much to them. Please do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, um, of course, as we know, in 2005, uh, civil partnerships were introduced in the United Kingdom, uh, and... Um, this provided many of the same legal rights as heterosexual couples, um, but this wasn't seen as sufficient by every gay and lesbian person. Uh, this was seen as being um, cut, falling short of providing all of the same rights as heterosexual people. Now, you may ask why. Well, the response to that would be that why should there be a system where homosexual people are not recognized in the same way, exactly the same way, as heterosexual people. So mm -hmm. this was the question that people were asking. And I vividly remember um, a, a lesbian couple, uh, two university professors, uh, Professor Celia Kitzinger and Professor Sue Wilkinson, who went to Canada, had a legal marriage as it is, was possible in Canada at the time, yeah. only to return to the United Kingdom and to find their marriage was not recognized as a marriage but rather as a civil partnership. So they took the government to court wow. um, to try and promote change and to get their partnership recognized as a marriage and they lost their case and were given a very hefty bill. Now. I think that the reason that they did that and the reason that they had a lot of support by members of the LGBT community, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community was that they really weren't given the same level of support. A civil partnership can, for some people, imply uh, a step below or a notch below um, a, a, a marriage, that it's mm -hmm. not, that there's a differentiation and they're asking why they're being differentiated, why they're not recognized in exactly the same way. So I, I can understand certainly why people are a bit upset about that. And it, it, there's a lot of increasing examples of um, of homosexuality sort of not being accepted. I mean, we've got Russia. We were mm. talking earlier about yeah. um, you know what's going on there. I mean, what are your views on on the Russians? You know, saying homosexuality is some people are saying that it's illegal, or mm. some people are just saying that it's not acceptable, mm. or you shouldn't talk about it. I mean, what is your view on that? Well, uh, it came as a surprise what was happening in, in Russia um, because we're talking about a country with a sort of communist background, yeah. a communist um, a foundation, let's say, uh, where homosexuality wasn't really outlawed uh, in any way that it would be in more religious countries. What's happening in Russia at the moment is that they are barring people from encouraging homosexuality. Now, encouraging in inverted commas, because as I said earlier on, I think homosexuality... How do you encourage? <laughs> yeah, that you cannot encourage it. I think it's a biological phenomenon and it's not possible to encourage people to, to be uh, either straight or, or gay and to succeed in changing their sexual orientation. I don't think that's the case at all. But um, yes, so that they're, they're, it's now an illegal offence to encourage that. What does that mean in real terms? Well, we only need to look back in history, not too far back in history. Uh, the UK legislation in the um, late 80s, early 90s, introduced by Margaret Thatcher, that was known as Section 28. Mm -hmm. What Section 28 uh, advocated was a ban on the encouragement of homosexuality within schools. So let's put this into context. What was being argued was that we shouldn't encourage children to be gay or lesbian. In real terms, what that meant was that when young people who are discovering their sexuality had doubts about their sexuality and wanted to talk to other people, they couldn't speak to their you teachers. Can't say anything. It yeah. was impossible to because it was an illegal offense for teachers to encourage homosexuality or to be seen to be doing so. So, of course, we can imagine that this would have caused a great deal of um, a conflict among people who are unable to tell their teachers, people whom they trust, potentially, about their sexuality. Well, that's what we're seeing in Russia. Luckily, this legislation no longer exists in the United Kingdom since 2001, but it does yeah. in Russia. So I think this will create problems in Russia. On that point, I mean, do you feel that there is an over-sexualization within the sort of education system with children? I mean, you know, they are being taught at a young age about sex and, you know, now it's sort of it's 
out there all the time and then on top of that it's you know homosexuality whether it's gay lesbian bisexual whatever it is mm -hmm. do you not think that that does have an impact on children at a very young age I think that what's very important is to create awareness because I think knowledge is the key to everything. It is the key to completely destroying negatives like discrimination. And if we don't tell people that there is diversity, the di diversity is there, it's always been there and it always will be there because it's biological diversity. Yeah. If we don't tell people, tell children that, that gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people exist, they'll never know. So they will grow up with um, prejudicial attitudes they will discriminate, they will, be, they will lack acceptance towards others, and we will be back to square one. We won't defeat the problem of discrimination. And so I think that it's very important for us to inform um, young children about the existence of, of sexual diversity. But at that age, when, when they are so young and they are just discovering themselves and mm. forming an identity, and I know earlier you've mentioned on a couple of occasions that yeah. you know, it, it's biological when you, know, when you feel that you're gay or whether you're heterosexual mm. at that age do you not think that it has some form of influence in terms of you know maybe individuals sort of experimenting mm. as it were and mm. seeing what homosexuality is about and then taking that route down it and then discovering they're gay or however you put it well what I'm, I'm not at all advocating that we in any shape or form encourage any kind of sexual behavior among uh, children that's absolutely inappropriate what I'm saying is that we need to tell children that uh, gay and lesbian bisexual people exist yeah because let's think about this within the context of gay adoption now this is perfectly legal in the United Kingdom and in many other countries so y babies and young children are being brought up by same-sex couples now, something that some of um, that, that many people have said to me is, well, they'll get, children will face discrimination. They're going to be made fun of at school. Yeah. Yes, that will happen if children find it abnormal that there is such thing as a same-sex couple bringing up a child. If we tell children that this exists, that some people are gay, some people are lesbians, I think we will create a, a context of growing acceptance. So, but I must emphasize, I'm not at all advocating that we encourage um, underage sex at all that's <laughs> just you know not at all what I'm advocating I think that there is a time for everything um, and uh, only through knowledge will we and knowledge delivered in an appropriate and proportion proportion way will we actually make social progress I think what have you seen in your experience uh, or cases that you may have been involved in regarding individuals who do wish to engage in same-sex marriage? You know, you mentioned that it was difficult for a couple of professors that you knew. Do you think that it is far more difficult for them and do you think that they are discriminated against within their own co cultural society and therefore couldn't marry how they would want to, for example, within the culture, as we touched upon the, the individuals who were recently mm. married, the, the two lesbians. I mean, mm. what are your views on that? I think that uh, same-sex marriage um, takes uh, one's sexual identity to another level, in the sense that when you enter into a marriage, you're entering into a social commitment as well. You're entering into a legal and social commitment. You're telling other people hey, I am with another individual of, who's a same-sex individual, and uh, I want you to recognize this partnership that I have with this individual. So obviously, if we look at this within the context of, say, ethnic and religious minorities who may be gay or lesbian, but are, for instance, uh, they have a partner that they haven't, whose identity they haven't revealed to others, well, it takes us to another level because they then are in a position where they have to tell others about this marriage. You know, it's very difficult yeah. to keep a marriage a secret, isn't it? So in that sense, it is very difficult. It means, uh, in, in many cases, it means that you're seeking public recognition. And in many cases, public recognition brings with it discrimination, marginalization, yeah. and those sorts of things that I talked about earlier on. Um, so it can be quite problematic. Have you found any sort of um, religious individuals, like priests from a certain Asian society, that have been accepting towards it or have been sort of tolerant towards it and said that actually it is okay for them to engage in a marriage? Um, it, this isn't a discussion that I've personally had with any priest because of the line of work. I'm generally interested in the experiences and the psychology of, of those um, non-heterosexual people and how mm -hmm. they're dealing with that.